Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. Last time we learned that we should use the t distribution to approximate the sampling distribution of the sample means when the population standard deviation is unknown and when the sample data have no outliers or strong skewness. Now I want to show that the following statement about the interpretation of t confidence intervals is correct. We can say that if we took many, many samples and constructed many, many confidence intervals, 95% of those confidence intervals will capture the true unknown population mean. To check this, we will take repeated samples from a population. Assume that the 100,000 heights generated in Minitab is our population. We could see that the shape of the histogram is approximately normal, the mean is 68.495, and the standard deviation is 3.565. These values are population parameters, but for this illustration, let's pretend that sigma is unknown. Next, let's take 1,000 samples of size 15 and construct 1,095% confidence intervals to find out the percentage that capture the true population mean. I will use the T star value for my confidence intervals because I am pretending not to know the population standard deviation. My first sample produced a sample mean of 67.54 and a standard deviation of 4.48. Pause here to construct the 95% confidence interval. My T confidence interval for the population mean is 65.06 to 70.02. We see on the graph that this interval, which is circled, captures the true mean of 68.495. This graph and the next four show the first 100 confidence intervals built from the first 100 samples of size 15. The confidence intervals in red did not capture the population mean of 68.495. Pause here to count the number of intervals that did not capture mu. Out of the first 100 intervals, 7 did not capture the true mean. After calculating 1,000 intervals, I discovered 943 captured the true mean which is close to what I expected. Do you notice anything different about these 100 confidence intervals? Pause here to think about it. Confidence intervals built using the sample standard deviation in their calculation will actually have different widths and margin of errors because the value of s varies from sample to sample. Let's compare the first two confidence intervals found based on our first two samples. Here are the two confidence intervals on a graph. Now, here are the data and the formulas. Since the standard deviation of the first sample is larger than the second one, 4.48 to 3.10, the width of the first confidence interval will be larger. Therefore, we note that using a T star value, which is always larger than the Z star value, creates a larger confidence interval to account for the fact that the sample standard deviations vary from sample to sample. If we use the Z star value, a smaller amount than 95% of the intervals would capture the population mean. Thus using the T star value when sigma is unknown allows us to correctly state the interpretation about repeated samples. Here it is again. In the next video, we will learn how to construct confidence intervals using categorical data. Thanks for watching.